Day by day, little by little, we write the story of our lives. Join author Joe Alsh on a walk down memory lane with tenacious humans who didn't let their circumstances dictate their life and what they could become. Welcome to the Lemon Tree Memoirs of Courage podcast. Welcome to the Lemon Tree. Today we have a special guest. It is National Kindness Day. And what better way to celebrate National Kindness Day than to, than to have my friend Barbara Glass um, here to talk about writing a book. What do you do? Where do you start? Um, Barbara has authored the um, Right Around the Corner column for more than 10 years, uh, featuring book reviews, um, interviews, and slices of life, besides writing blogs and um, content for businesses. She is a bona fide card-carrying English major who reads and writes for the fun of it. And welcome, Barbara Glass. Thank you, Joe. So glad, glad to be here. So glad to have you here. Um, we're talking about, you know, with my book, um, I have gotten a lot of feedback, great feedback, in fact, and the most of the feedback is, how did you do it? How did you start? How did you know what to write? Um, mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that today. Um, we're already near the holidays where people are going to be thinking about their New Year's resolutions. That's mm -hmm. only six weeks away. Mm -hmm. So what better way than sp to spend the new year writing your story? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, I, I want to share a quote that I found today that I thought was so interesting. We tend to over to underestimate the amount of time it will take to write a book while overestimating how much time we can devote in the process. So let's talk about writing your story. Where do you start, Barbara? There's lots of ways to start. Start at Christmas and write about the Christmases that you remember. Uh, start with your New Year's resolutions, how those have changed over time. I think that the best way to start writing about yourself is to write about yourself and to do it in pieces which will help you um, help you stitch it together in time and the most important thing though when approaching writing a memoir in particular is to think about why you want to do this it's the why are you writing it for your grandchildren as a gift are you writing it for yourself as an exploration of decisions you've made? Uh, is it, are you writing it for publication to be a book on Oprah and want to make it sensational? I mean, why are you doing it? And so in the name of National Kindness Day, The Lemon Tree was a very kind book. It, was, it had some, some difficult things to talk about, but it, it was a very kind book and it reflects its author. Well, and for me, my writing, it was really a journey for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I almost feel that person in the book wasn't me. It's so hard to explain. Now that I've gotten through, um, I feel like that when anybody goes through something difficult, um, it's getting to the other side that's so fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to share, you know what, yeah, it was hard. There is strength in the struggle, though, and um, I've learned so much from that little Joe, mm -hmm. um, and now I'm all grown up Joe, and um, it's just a different chapter in my life. So, um, but, uh, you know, one thing, not everybody has a sad childhood or a really sad event. Um, and so what if they want to write on something funny or something history or, you know, do they have to write a memoir about something tragic? No, no. In fact, if, if you are writing a memoir and this is what the lemon tree is, then there are going to be episodes where you, you're, you're going to have difficulty writing about them because you maybe haven't worked through the experience completely. Or there are permissions you need to get. There may be other people involved in the struggle that are 
you need to talk to. You need to interview them, if you will. You need to get their perspective because it's going to make the description that much richer. Uh, I promise you, you have a family of six children, you're going to have six different viewpoints on whatever happened. So that makes how you feel, it might change how you feel, it might not, but at least it rounds the description out to where the reader can understand what was going on at the time. So I think it's important to write about those episodes separately. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't believe that you have to start at a certain point and end at a certain point because your opinion on that may change. Mm -hmm. uh, it may, uh, we were talking about certain memoirs that are historical in nature. Sometimes they start in the middle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they start, they don't start, well, I was a small child in Louisiana. No, it, sometimes they start this is, you know, I'm entering school or I'm starting a new job and this is where it led. And then you do things in flashback. Uh, I would suggest if you want to write a historical book, um, find what really interests you. Mm -hmm. The why is the most important thing. Why are you doing this? Because that is the only thing that's going to propel you to finish it because it, some of it is a slog, isn't it? I mean, when you wrote your book, there were parts of it that you wanted to kind of get to the good part. Well, mm -hmm. you have to put in the connective tissue in order that they understand where you are at a certain point. So uh, writing a book is time consuming. You need to find your best time of the day when you're the most clear headed. What are the circumstances? Uh, do you have to have the radio in the background or do you have to have a cup of coffee in your hand? Uh, do you write better in your pajamas or do you like to work late at night? Some people, I have some friends that, that do their best work at one and two o'clock in the morning. But you, it's like exercise size it's like it's a discipline it is. it's a discipline similar to starting a new diet or an exercise plan find what you like that's why you're doing it that's why you're setting time aside to do it and do it do it according to what's going to help you get there well, and somebody, it was a librarian at one of the high schools who wrote a book, a couple of books, children's books. And she gave me advice to just write whatever was on my brain uh, for three minutes, just write. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I need to go to the grocery, or oh, I've got to get to the bank, or I'm going to be late for work if I don't, or let's stop at the dry cleaning. So whatever I was thinking, just that filler, um, just to get that off my brain so that it could be clear and fresh for writing. Mm -hmm. And another tidbit I had, kind of like you're talking about writing about Christmas and maybe some Christmases in the past, mm -hmm. just do 1,500 words. Yes. Um, and yes. make it, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, 45 pages, but just a story, 1,500 words, and then you might be able to expand on that you yes. know go back and one thing I, I know when I would read write a chapter and then I'd read it and review it I would you can tweak it to death you yes. can tweak it tweak it tweak it um, but um, it, it's a it's a slow process it, it takes a long long time and well I, I have a, a friend who's an artist and it's similar to mm -hmm. doing a painting you can go back to it and go back to it and tweak it and tweak it. And at some point, you have to say, I'm done. Mm -hmm. It's done. It's done. And you have to walk away from it. And what I do with writing pieces is I let them marinate. Okay, leave it aside. Let me go to a different section of the book. And then I'll come back to this. Mm -hmm. And I did the same, like parts that were really sad for me, um, you know, and I share in my book, My Mother Attempted Suicide. Um, that particular part of the book, my brother and sister could not read it. Um, it was so traumatic to us, or for us, and I bet that those four chapters took me six months to write. Yes. It was so hard. And another thing, I know we do research. Um, like I wrote about the late 60s in New Orleans. Um, I wrote about the early 70s. 
And I had to do research. One thing I did that helped me, I would go to antique fairs and I would go to estate sales and I would see little things that would remind me, oh, wait, yeah. you know, um, one just just off the top of my head, um, my uh, aunt used to sell Avon. And do you remember in the late 60s, early 70s, they had some of the coolest decanters. Oh, the, the Avon bottles. Oh, I know they people, were fabulous. They collected them like people collect shot glasses and, and souvenir spoons. I know. Yeah. And so that is what helped me. Mm-hmm. So um, other than going to estate sales, you know, um, how would you um, tell a writer, say they want to write about um, I'm going to go back to their childhood Christmas from their earliest memory. So mm-hmm. what would you recommend them do to prepare for that? Um, do you have an album? Mm-hmm. Do you have photographs of your siblings? And you remember that plaid sofa. And I remember hearing stories about my father drinking bourbon on Christmas Eve because that's the only way he could get through the assembly instructions on the radio flyer or whatever. Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah. yeah. Uh, And the next morning, the milk and cookies were always gone. Santa came. and, And I think for research purposes, an album is a good place to start. I think Google it, you know, mm-hmm. Google the years. Um, I think interesting when you're writing about the past, you do have to do a considerable amount of research. Uh, I was working on one memoir that is uh, was from World War II France, from the underground. And wow. so I did a lot of research on that time, you know, because I didn't experience it myself. So you have to find books on it. You have to, mm-hmm. you can Google people who were, uh, alive at the time and and f- figure out what the political situation is it makes the context if it's personal or if it's somebody else the research and the context make make the story it enriches the story it greatly does. Uh, and oh I, <clears throat> I was thinking about that this morning and I thought okay when I was a kid what was it like going to the bank uh, what were the grocery stores like? Oh, you remember bread oh, was ten cents yes, a loaf. Yeah, 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 and and riding in the cart and the um, and and the, we played outside all the time. Like I, I noticed that in your book. Yeah, go on outside and play. You know that was what we did. Uh, there, there weren't many fences. There were dogs everywhere. There was you just played. You mm-hmm. made a you made fun. You made your own fun with a baseball game in the lot next to your house. And the carnival came to town, mm-hmm. and it was in a a vacant lot that was um, down by the post road. And it was my first experience with the midway that they call it here and at the Texas State Fair. And um, it, it just doing that reminds you reminds you reminds you and you dig a little deeper and a little deeper and then you have to cull to make it rich and to make it so that it communicates what you want to do to get to the next place yeah and put yourself back in that time that you want to write about i know i was thinking when you mentioned the groceries um the s and h green stamps oh 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 i would just and my mother would never <laughs> that was mess that was trash. my job that was oh, my job but, i had to you know she had little <laughs> strips of stamps and i was the one that had to put them in the in in the book and uh, we got a croquet set out of it and a set of TV tables and, I mean, just stuff. It was just, it was fun. I know, it was fun. I remember I went to an estate sale and somebody was selling them for like 10 cents a piece. This was a couple of years ago. Oh, and Lord. I bought them. I'm like, and my husband's like, what are you going to do with those things? They're just <laughs> neat. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'll do with them. Well, I remember when I, 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 I inherited a sewing machine from my husband's grandmother okay and in the bottom of it were war stamps now you talk about going back another generation these were uh sugar and they were war stamps and i just i said i must save these and i gave them i passed them along um but it was a treasure to find yeah so what are and i know people can contact you at right around the corner but what are some resources if somebody doesn't have the financial means to work with a one-on-one um, coach and memoir coach and 
um, someone like you with your esteem and um, what would you recommend people do? Just the average that wants to do something and write a book doesn't have a lot of money. All right. You can go to the library mm -hmm. and use those computers if you don't have one. Uh, they have lots of resource books and those librarians know where every fleck of dust is in that library. They can help you find reference books that are going to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, you can go to Staples or Office Depot and buy a buy a tablet book. I mean a cheap like a journal. Just a yeah, it doesn't have to be a moleskin journal mm -hmm. for 10 or 15 bucks at Barnes and Noble. It can be just a spiral bound notebook and write longhand. <gasps> Longhand, how about that? Um, and just start thinking about what you want to write about. But most important, you have to think about the why and who you're writing it for. Mm -hmm. Who are you writing it for? Mm -hmm. And um, and then the rest of it will come as you write about your experiences. Find the time of day you want to do it. Get that cup of coffee. Make it quant. Make it. Make the atmosphere. It's just like just like getting your bedroom ready to go to sleep. You want the shades drawn, and you you have the sound machine going, or whatever the fan, whatever it is, helps bring you down to that point where you're going to be resting. Okay, you do the same thing with writing. What's what's going to set the stage for it? That's going to be comfortable for you. And make sure you have open-ended time if you can. Uh, I, I find that writing on deadline is is a. Uh, I do it all the time, but to come home and have an hour to get something done is difficult. Mm -hmm. I'd rather work ahead when I have an open-ended afternoon, and work on it then rather than trying to do it in too short a period of time. And that's but you I, can start in bits and pieces. Right. You can and start that's, that way. I put, one thing that helped me is um, it was $50. I went to the local community college and I joined a memoir writing class. Right. It was for people 50 and older, but they've got things, you know, all churches have them. Um, we've got sure. one at our church sure. right now that's free. Um, but um, I would do those. It, there was a group of six of us. We'd write 2,000 words and then critique each other. Mm -hmm. Negative, never in a negative, oh, that was horrible, but in encourage, you know what? I couldn't, I couldn't see that character. I mm -hmm. couldn't, you know what? I, I think you should expand on describing um, the movie theater. Yeah. Or So we worked together and encouraged each other. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a great resource. Yeah. There are online classes. Yes. Um, there's one out of New York City that is always doing classes, and I think it's $200 or so. Um, but you get critiqued online by fellow writers. Well, there's um, a, there's ed to go programs, but I find really that the, the classroom situations are better because mm -hmm. you can actually have a conversation with somebody. I've never really liked the online classes because you're not really I in know. the room with anybody. There's not a, a human connection. Mm -hmm. And I think writing is a very human thing to do. And so I recommend the Brookhaven College or Richland College or wherever you go. I recommend those classes as opposed to... And they're so affordable. Yes. And you make friends. I mean, you're sharing your soul. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the stories in our class that I was in, and I continued for two years, um, every six weeks I'd sign up again and just made wonderful friendships yes. with these people that had totally <laughs> different stories than mine, but fascinating. And, yes. and it was encouraging. I wanted them to succeed as well. So... Talk about, let's talk about the top memoirs and why are memoirs so popular? What, what do you think the reason memoirs are so popular? Because reality is far more interesting than fiction uh, mm -hmm. to me. To, you, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, I, 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 I read some memoirs and I said, who would have thought? Who would have, who would have invented this? Uh, and, and it's just far more interesting there's 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 usually more personal reminiscences but uh texture the characters uh, i just have enjoyed them so much and they make a point 
um, I mentioned Orange is the New Black earlier, that, that it, it it's talks about a particular experience, but then it's done in flashback. Uh, the childhood part and the relationships are done in flashback, but it's talking about a particular instance, a particular period of time. And I think that's, um, uh, it, it's so valuable. You couldn't make this up. Mm -hmm. And so somebody lived it. Mm -hmm. And that makes, I, I love biographies. I like autobiographies, which is a memoir. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like nonfiction better than fiction. Me too. Just because it really is it really happened to somebody well it is it is reality and it's fascinating and you think people are so drawn to the inquirer and people to find out what's going on with what celebrity you yeah. know um, but even sally field's book in pieces mm -hmm. is fascinating mm -hmm. um what she endured and she is an incredible actress but yes. just to know her life story was very interesting so well and how they got to now <clears throat> Mm -hmm. You know, like reading The Lemon Tree was interesting. It's how you, I mean, I can definitely see you in this. And so mm -hmm. it's a, um, it just gives a, a kind of an aura around somebody that, gee, I never knew that. Wow, that's really interesting. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and for me too, one thing someone recommended to me when I was writing to read memoirs because I was writing about my childhood. Mm -hmm. So read memoirs of other people writing about their childhood. Mm -hmm. And so for me, there was a book, uh, Blackbird, it was so good. Um, Glass Castle, you mm -hmm. know, that is like the number one memoir, still number one. Well, ed Educated is one that's educated similar to that. Educated is fabulous. Yeah. And I have even reached out. I've met Jeanette Walls with mm -hmm. The Glass Castle. I reached out to the author of Educated, and she's emailed me back. So these are real people, you yeah. know. Um, and yeah. I think one of the questions I asked Jeanette Walls was, how did you how did your brother and sister react? And, you know, she's like, you know, it took them a little time because you're not only sharing your soul, you know, you're sharing your family. That's what I meant about permissions. Right. Sometimes you need permissions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to change names. Sometimes you have to kind of fuzzy the background so that an individual in the story is not recognizable. Because you're in telling your story, you're telling their story, and it's like theft in a way. It and so is. you need you need to at least be respectful. Be respectful and say, you know, I'm writing a memoir, and I wanted to let you know that. And you know, if there's anything, I, I mean, I I will probably share chapters with you before in advance of publication. Just because I want you to, this you're a part of my life as much as anybody else, mm -hmm. and I respect that. So mm -hmm. you have to get permissions, you do. And and for me, you know, my mother did not. But it's not a reason not to do it. No, yeah. and, and for me, my mother did not have the genes, the mothering genes that most mothers have. Yes. And so I don't, if, if I had released this book when she was still alive, I mean, she would be devastated. There's no way I could have done it. You couldn't she, have done it. I couldn't have done it. And even my dad, um, at the in the following, the last six months of his life, he did read chapters. And I shared with him, and my dad lived a lifetime of regrets. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to talk about some things. He knew I was going to be releasing my story. And... Um, you know, we had good talks, so it well, is important. Well, and he knew he knew he was he was he close was to the end. <laughs> yes, he okay. Knew so he was close in to a the way, end. it was it was um, it was good for him mm -hmm. because it was a way of giving him permission to forgive himself mm -hmm. for the regrets because we all have them. We and we do. all have a boatload of them, and it's uh, it's easy for the minister to say, "Oh, you just put your regrets in a basket and float them down the river." Mm -hmm. Not that easy to do. Mm -hmm. Not that easy to no, do. No, and you and I both work in the senior industry, and I have seen people, 
you know, in those final days of life, they want that closure. Yes. They want, I know with my mother, she was not the perfect mother, but when she was in that dying process, those last three days, I did not leave her side. She would hold onto my hand so tight. She squeezed, and I know she was saying, Joe, I'm so sorry. If mm-hmm. I could do things differently, I would, you mm-hmm. know? And I cling to that. I'm, I'm you know, um, because she was a wonderful person. She just wasn't good at mothering. So I know. And if and if we had this converse this very conversation at another time, I know you would get very teary because you'd go right back to that moment. Those are key. Those are uh, those are human. Mm-hmm. They're human. So just we're about, we were going to need to wrap it up. This has gone so fast and it's so wonderful. And I know I'm, we could talk for hours on this. We could talk this. forever. But, um, and have. I know, I know. <laughs> and you're just so wonderful at what you do. So just real quickly, how long should a book be? How many pages or words should a book be? As long as it is. As long as it's, re- as long as it's necessary to tell your story. Mm-hmm. And that's why... I, I think it's good to start with certain pieces to write your 1500 words mm-hmm. similar to what you were saying in class um, the typical book club book is going to be between three and four hundred pages mm-hmm. typical mm-hmm. I think for the general reader that's about as long as you're going to hold somebody's attention mm-hmm. okay I mean, the, people you know you get Ron Chernow doesn't know how to write a short biography. He doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. So you're slogging through a thousand pages of fabulous page-turning biography, but oh my God, it's a doorstop. Mm -hmm. Well, and (laughs) I'm busy. Typically, yeah, but typically three to four hundred pages. But I think your story is as long as it needs to be. Mm -hmm. If it's 200 pages, if it's a novella, it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. As long as you know the why, you know what you're doing, maybe a hundred pages of poetry, and that tells your story. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Some pe- people have different ways of doing it. They do it in little pieces, or they do it in a letter writing style. Like what was the book, The, um, the Color Purple? Yes. Um, and that was, a, that was a novel, but yeah. that was a wonderful, just letters every day to God. You know, they were wonderful. That was a great book. Well, and the, the, the <coughs> Orange Peel, uh, Literary, Orange. Guernsey Literary Society, that was entirely in letters. Now, it was fiction. But it was real. I mean, it really, the setting was it was very real. But it was all letters. Mm-hmm. Very hard to do. Mm-hmm. But that is a way you can do it. It just is as long as it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Barbara. And tell us, how can um, the listener get in touch with you? And if they have questions for you, um, what is a contact? Well, my, the best way to contact me is I, I have a website right around the corner dot net, but it is not one where you you can't contact you can't leave comments on it. So uh, I would um, and I have a, a blog and so forth on there, but um, not a lot of my pieces. You can read my pieces in FYI fifty plus and in Good Life Family, uh, the, senior, uh, the Senior Voice, which is no longer there, but you might find it online. Um, or you can email me at glasstexas at outlook.com. And it's all spelled out, glasstexas at outlook.com. And I'll be happy to respond. Thank you so much. And uh, this has been great. I want to have you back again. And we'll continue on about that New Year's resolution and writing your book. Yeah. So thank you so much, Barbara. You're Have welcome. a wonderful kind day of kindness today. It's and a, uh, every, just, every day is a good day to be kind. It is. So thank you so much. Thank and have you. a wonderful day. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Lemon Tree Memoirs of Courage podcast, hosted by author Joe Alsh. You can find more information on Joe's beginnings and the Lemon Tree at thelemontreebook.com.